Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of my fluff reading from Data Slate Wag Razgul. As promised, we're going to be reading all of the fluff, and this time we're going to deal with the secretive and mysterious origins of Grazgul Mag Uruk Thraka with a section called Rise to Power. At the close of the 41st millennium, the name of Grazgul is spoken in fearful whispers in many alien languages. A name synonymous with dread across the galaxy. But it was not always so. The greatest orc warlord began his climb to infamy just as any other orc warrior slogging it out on a backwater world. At the very edge of Segmentum Solar lies a now frozen orb that was once the sporadically populated orc planet of Urk. Its history has been largely forgotten, buried beneath successive invasions, but it was first named Uroclas after it was founded by an exploration fleet launched from Terra during the Dark Age of Technology. It was part of the Zornian star system, and the tides of the warp flowed strongly to that point, making it an excellent hub. Humanity prospered on Uroclis, for it was a world rich in minerals, and within a few hundred years, the colonies had grown to thriving cities and busy spaceports. It was undoubtedly the lights and activity that drew the orcs. They swept across Uruklis like wildfire. They raised it to the ground before disappearing aboard their great junk fleet, riding the warp tides to seek other exploits. As is their way, though, the Greenskins unwittingly left behind traces of their spores, and one day they would rise again. Due to the flow of the warp, it was inevitable that spacefaring races would again find the habitable Zornian system. Between barren periods, the world became an Eldar outpost the home of a cluster of Spindorians and a Hrud Warren. At times, the long dormant orc spores would erupt, and swarms of greenskins would develop in some secretive corner of the planet. It was not until the time of the Great Crusade that mankind returned again in force. It was the Dark Angel's Astartes Legion, who cleared the planet of its life forms and again planted the flag of humanity upon it. Once more, the planet was dubbed Uroclays. For over 2,000 years, mankind mined there, building hive cities and tethering spaceports to its twin moons. Minor Xenos raids occurred, but it wasn't until the near the middle of M32 that a great greenskin wag swept the system. It was the largest recorded orc attack upon the Imperium, with dozens of invasions blazing across all five segmentums. Soon the Zorian system fell into orc hands. As Uroclass was overwhelmed by greenskins, the last survivors of the world boarded the vast star freighter Dominion and escaped into the suddenly shifting warp. The tides of the warp had altered, making the Zornian system no longer easily accessible. Thus began a long period of stagnation for the orcs. For nearly 8,000 years, Uroclass, renamed Urk, was a battlefield of warring greenskin tribes. At first, they fought over the ruins of the hive cities, clashing over the best loot. 
These battles devolved as did the piles of plunder they fought over. As the millennia ground on, the wars continued. No leader proved large enough to gather more than a handful of the tribes or clans beneath him. So, an equilibrium of squalor became the way of life. Small orc warbands fought each other over possession of an ever-dwindling pile of scrap iron and derelict machinery. It was into this bleak cycle of futile violence that Grazkol was born. <clears throat> Sorry. Mm. A strange path to greatness. In a curious twist of fate, the Imperium of Mankind may have had an unsuspecting hand in creating the most formidable orc of his era, and perhaps of all time. After years of fighting, orcs and monitoring their presence in outlying systems, the Imperium had learned that, under the right conditions, even sporadic orc populations could multiply with startling speed. The rise of a strong warlord could unite the feuding clans, triggering a mass release of spores. Should this gathering grow large enough, it would act as a beacon to orcs in nearby systems, drawing into it a swarm migration that built with frightening intensity. In less than a Terran decade, orcs could go from being a minor nuisance to the world's dominant species. The Imperium has found that if a rising wag can be detected and countered early enough, the orcs can be broken and dispersed with little cost. Thus, in systems known to be plagued with greenskins, various watch posts are deployed. In the Zornian system, the Dark Angels had established a range of monitoring stations coordinated by a command sanctum in the barren mountainous region of Urk. This hub routinely fed scans and other information back to the nearest Dark Angel vessels. In this way, the greenskin numbers were regularly checked and the Dark Angels could also keep track of the feral human populations in that system for they were always searching for new recruiting planets from which they could draw battle-tested warriors. Ironically, it was this very monitoring station that set Grazkul on his journey to greatness. The stripling warrior Grazkul was a trooper in a goth warband that took part in a raid upon the Space Marine's command sanctum. Although it was hidden atop a remote mountain, crag on Urk, it was not safe from the orcs. Always seeking scrap, the Greenskins discovered the hidden base and sought to dismantle it, triggering the base's auto-defense system. During the initial rush to claim the base, Grazkol was hit in the head by a bolter shell. The shot that pulverized a large section of his cranium and turned a sizable portion of his brain to absolute mush. It was quite possible that the young and profusely bleeding Grazkol might have been left for dead then and there for two circumstances, but for two circumstances. Grazkol got back to his feet a sign of toughness and grit that any goth respected. Also, it was widely known that a particularly idled Death Skull's pain boy was paying those who brought him fresh flesh to work with. The carrion birds did not feed on Grasgull that day. As his own mob guided him onwards, he was a stumbling wreck and had to hold his bleeding brains in with both hands. 
But they eventually reached the Death Skull's outpost of Rustpike. There, his own mob traded Grazgall to Mad Doc Bratznik for the sum total of three teeth and a new chopper. Mad Doc Gratznik. On his home world of Urk, Mad Doc Gratznik had gained quite a reputation. Like all pain boys, he had a fascination with getting his hands dirty. However, he was, no, he was so anxious to experiment that he was loath to wait for willing patience. It was well known that the Mad Doc would pay to have unwitting or unconscious patients delivered to him, so long as he got a cut of the action. Grotznik's warlord, Dreadmech, the leader of the region's Death Skulls, turned a blind eye to Grotznik's habit of taking these operations from out of clan. This was for two reasons. Firstly, a great many of Grotznik's patients came down with a nasty case of death. So his work rarely helped any other clan. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, Dreadmech's bionic optics, installed by Grotznik himself, uh, did not work very well. This meant the warlord was blind in one eye and often missed out on key details. So it was that Mad Dog Grotznik was unobserved while he operated on a badly wounded young goth warrior named Grazkull. After two gore-splattered hours, the deed was done. Whether it was Grotznitz tinkering around with Gradskull's brain, the accidental inclusion of a foreign object into his brain pan, or sheer coincidence after the operation, Grazkull was never the same again. Later, when it became clear that Grazkull was hurtling along the path of greatness, the pain boy was more than willing to take complete credit for his success. In truth, when word got out that Grazkull could channel the divine wishes of the orc gods, Grotznik had long queues of the richest knobs waiting outside his tent, asking for the Grazkull special. Ha ha ha! And then we will move on to part three. The Green Skin Visions in my next video. Until then, bye!